this story out of Bristol, uh, you're, you're going to need something. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Many of you know on Friday evenings we kind of single issue the show because we tape it on Thursday. We don't, uh, we tape four nights a week for five shows. You find, you got that figured out, right? 7.30 on MIRI TV, Fox Province at midnight. And uh, I look forward to the Friday shows because they're comprehensive, uh, sometimes they're good debates or just a long narrative that we all want to hear. So my esteemed producer, Anita Buffoni, uh, sent this Globe story to me the other day and said, you got to read this. I'm like, yeah, okay, well, who wrote it? Uh, Amanda Milkovitz wrote it. Well, I was like, well, Amanda's pretty sharp. And by the way, she just jumped ship from the Projo to the Boston Globe. So I'd love to see how she's doing, pick her brain, find out what's happening journalistically and all that kind of a thing. And so I kind of really didn't pay much attention to the idea. I mean, we do 10 shows a week in Dan York World on radio and television, right? So it was only last night, which is Wednesday to me, two nights ago to you, that I read the story and I was sick to my stomach. I was literally sick. I was, I, I just, and, and, and there are a couple of things about it. I have always been very concerned that anybody who is accused of sexual abuse in the public eye never recovers. Never recovers. Uh, most of those accusations are legitimate. Um, but I don't know how you get your name, let alone good name, back once something like this runs. And so journalists have to be very careful. Um, people like me have to be very careful in talking about what the journalists are doing. Law enforcement has to be very careful. But sometimes the story just kind of just, just speaks an oh my gosh factor that can't be hidden. And so that's why I said, I reinforced the conversation or the decision to, to bring Amanda on. Um, so I'm just gonna let her tell the story. We don't have a lot of production value for this. Again, <laughs> you're seeing uh, headlines and pictures. Welcome, by the way. Great oh, to have you. Thank you for having me on. I you've been on, you've been on the, the the police and crime and other beats um, for so many years here in Providence. Right, How right. long in the journal? Two thousand. I started at the Providence Journal right. and almost immediately ended up covering Providence Police, and um, it was continuing to cover crime and investigations up until uh, I left the journal in April and came to the Boston Globe. And I think you know what I'm talking about because you have been a go-to person for us and for so many people in this community um, when it comes to crime, the politics around law enforcement. Uh, all of that. You are, I'm sure, a walking encyclopedia locally of, of the, the law enforcement community. You're on a first name basis mm -hmm. with anybody who's anybody who can be arrested or who has been arrested. <laughs> uh, so before we even get into the story, you know what I'm talking about in terms of the sensibilities, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You wrote a story in the Boston Globe that is shocking, disturbing, and yes. reputation killing. Right? right? So before we talk about the story itself, how hard did it weigh on you to write it? You know, I knew what the story was going to be. I actually knew what the story was going to be like when I first found the lawsuit and began reading it and then read the police report. So is this how you tripped on it? You found a lawsuit? Or I, did, you, did somebody tell you about, hey, hey, blah, 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 as you don't normally go? I do my reporting, you know, yeah. out and about. And um, stories like this take a lot of time. Now, I had just come off of writing about a man who said that he had been raped by a priest at St. Aloysius' home. I had some experience in writing about someone who was accusing, who, who, was, who was a victim of childhood sexual abuse. And I've been following the statute of limitations legislation where victims were coming forward and speaking at the General Assembly about their experiences. So I knew the conversation and I'd had years of experience in talking to other victims, um, sex trafficking victims, rape victims, um, people who've been through this. this um, the lawsuit was disturbing. Um, I didn't know him. I, I'm, I was a Providence girl. I know greater Providence. You I didn't had, know the subject of the story. I didn't know the subject of the story. And once I started looking into him, I was fascinated. So, you, so the story we're going to tell is, is, well, how would you describe the story? If mm. you had it, 
I'm sure this happens all the time. So what are you worried about? <laughs> I heard you wrote a big story. What's right, it about? Right, right. Rather than a headline, how would you describe it in, in 15 seconds? I the mean, story is about? It's, it's about three men who are accusing a prominent civic public official of childhood sexual abuse. And what happened? Right, simply said. I think that's exactly mm -hmm. how, how I would refer to it. Um, journalists never tell us about their, their trade work uh, or their craft necessarily or how the sausage is made. But I have to ask, is it just a peruse of court cases that cause your interest here? Or did somebody say, hey, Amanda, there's a story <laughs> in Bristol that you've got to find out about. I mean, I mean, how did it come? Reporter never tells. Right. But I can tell you that I'm out and about all the time, and I talk to lots of people. OK. And find things out. So you did, sometimes you did, I can follow, sometimes. So you, well, you, the reason I yeah. ask the question in part is yeah. because there's a everybody knows factor going yes. on in Bristol about this. So, yes. so can you at least help me to the point where you, you tell me that you were you were tipped about the lawsuit because there's a there's a there's an undercurrent in the community or I, did you just find it haphazardly I'm just a reporter I just did my thing and I think what fascinated me most about this lawsuit a lot of things I tried twice by the way to get this answer it looks like <laughs> it looks like I'm not going to get nope. it we're talking to a veteran here nope. but you understand why I asked the question in part right doesn't matter to you doesn't matter okay doesn't matter I can tell you why it's interesting. Why can, what's interesting? Why this why this case is particularly no, interesting? No, I mean, it, of course it's interesting. Sure. I mean, if you like train wrecks, I mean, I, yeah. or it's not, it, I don't want to minimize the importance of it because it's mm. an important story. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Tell me why it's interesting. So when I read the lawsuit, there was one victim, and it also included the state police report as part of the lawsuit. That's what got my attention because when you read the report, we don't often get access to these because no one's been charged. It's a state police investigation. And names are redacted except for the name of the victim, um, the alleged victim who's filed the, the lawsuit. So that was helpful. And then in reading the report, there are three victims in this. There's the man who's filing the lawsuit. There's the, the man, state police report. State police report. There's the man filing the lawsuit who alleges that he was raped um, when Mr. Barboza was a police officer. There's uh, a man who says that he was molested at the fire station when Mr. Barboza was a volunteer firefighter. And then there's an allusion to a 1982 case. So that's interesting. Three victims, alleged victims, are interesting. But the other part that really caught me was a quote from the deputy chief at the time, Stephen Contente, he's now the town administrator. Deputy chief in Bristol. Yes, and he said that Everybody in the community knows. And he was referring to the 1982 case, but that's what stopped me. I thought, wait, I'm, it's a small town. I'm from a small town. Um, so, you know, people do know things. But that's what really, it's a story about a man, it's a story about a crime, but it's a story about a small town. Here's what's also interesting. The statute of limitations is running out on this case. Most, most of what is alleged here is decades old, correct? Mm -hmm even amongst the three parties that are, that are referenced in the state police report. Right. The criminal statute of limitations has run out long ago. The state police report is cumulative over the course. I didn't go back to, to read it. I read the story thoroughly, but I, I, I'm now, now that you've talked about the state police report, it seems to me that it was one of the things that I noted during my read of your story, that there is no criminal option for prosecution here, so I find it intriguing that a civil litigation is accompanied by a state police report so it's that has no end game possibility. Well, well, it does with the civil lawsuit. So there's a seven, the seven year discovery rule. So the, the plaintiff is alleging that he discovered, he you know, repressed memory, that he discovered that he was injured. That's his argument. So, you know, it's filed in court. And when the state police... The lawsuit. The lawsuit. Which is civil. Right. But the lawsuit, this is what's, what is so great. Um, the state police will do an investigation, but as they wrote in this, there was nothing they could do except provide the report to the victims if they wish, if they want to I go for and file a lawsuit. Do you, in your history of following the state police, mm -hmm. is, is, is that normal? That the state police will, will actually based on your claims of something that happened yesterday or years ago, will we'll, we'll provide you an investigation that is foundational for your civil lawsuit? Or if, if 
very much like Bob Mueller wouldn't indict, would, mm -hmm. wouldn't, wouldn't talk about prosecution of the president because there was, because there's a, a Justice Department policy against indicting mm -hmm. a sitting president, where Bob Mueller said, you know what, that's why I can't even give you an opinion because we never considered it. Why did, why are the state police, for lack of a better term, and I say this respectfully, a utility for evidence in a civil lawsuit when there'll never be a criminal prosecution? That's a question for them. I mean, the, the report is provided to the victim. The victim made an allegation. So they going spoke back to, to my, the victim. I'm sorry for the length yeah. of the question. Yeah. Do you find that to be a, a, a standard practice by the state police? Well, you know, I, I read over a lot of the reports that the diocese uh, made and forwarded to the state police, and then the state police would speak to the, the alleged victims of clergy members. I, I read back going back to, I think, about 2003. Even and though this they know there consistent. is no criminal possibility. That's fascinating. I've got to talk to the, 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 the colonel about that. that I'm not criticizing you never know. it. I'm intrigued by mm -hmm. it. You never know what, that it turns up something that's, that is prosecutable in current statute time, which is, what, seven years? Yep, yep. All right, when we come yeah. back, the specifics of the story. So um, uh, get, get a drink. We'll be right back. You know, I, I, I don't know how movie scripts get written. Um, this might be one. Uh, mm. It's not one of those movies that you can't wait to see. It's one of those movies that no. somehow the train wreck mentality and the and the ambulance, you know, we always we we always rubberneck on the highways and we watch these kinds of stories. Sure. It's also important though if there's something if there's an ongoing dynamic in a community, the community needs to address it. So past the 15-second executive summary that you offered me, mm -hmm. give me the two minute on what this story is about knowing full well that you've already named and put pictures in about the man who is alleged civilly sure. to have committed sex abuse crimes against right. three young men in their early years in their in their young men boys in their boy, boys in their yes right. in their childhood one said he was six one said he was ten. knowing full well and I'm saying yeah. right now if mr. Barbosa ever wants to come here and say it's not true there's a seat right here I I'm not here to try this case uh, go ahead Sure. I, it, so he's really important to town, and he's he has done like a lot. Like he's a he's a dude <laughs> in Bristol. He's on every board and commission. I might be exaggerating slightly, but probably not every board and commission you can think of. He is a volunteer. Was the honorary he's, guy the honorary what the grand marshal in the parade in 2014? He was the chief marshal in 2014, and that kind of capped the career. Um, you know, he's been on the town democratic committee, town council for multiple years, vice chairman. He was on the Bristol Warren School Committee, I think. He has served everywhere. Um, volunteer fire, fire department, he was a police officer, he was a police explorer, state fire marshal, which is where he got in trouble. Um, trouble how? Well, that's when he got arrested. For? The only time he was arrested was in 1982, when a 14-year-old boy alleged that when he was walking home, Mr. Barboza pulled up to him in his fire marshal's car and tried to get him to get into the car. Offered asked him to come home with him, um, asked if he wanted to get gay. The boy was terrified. That's the phrase that quotes the pair, the kid didn't know what he meant, he said, get gay. Right, yeah. right. According to your story and according to the suit. And according to when I spoke to him. To the I victim. spoke to all three. Right. Yeah, and I thought that that was really important. If we're going to do a story like this, it's right. important to make sure yeah. that we talk to everybody sure. we can. Yeah. And, you know, it's funny. I mean, I know you're, you're here. That's a clumsy phrase, by the way. It's just weird anyway. The yeah. whole thing is, I mean, sexual abuse obviously is more than weird, but that's a weird thing to say uh, anyway. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a disturbing story. It's, you call it a train wreck. Um, but since it was published, the victims have been so thankful. I mean, relieved. Just, uh, they've been texting me and calling me and saying, people finally believe me. You know, my family didn't believe me before, and now they're devastated. Because the victims, the three victims, and the policy of the Globe is not to name the victims. Without uh, their permission. Uh, without their permission. Right. So there is one key player who is named, because that's, mm -hmm. the, that's, the, lawsuit. The, that's the litigant. Right. And that other, the other two are not. Uh, I, too, am not going to, I'm not even going to name the, the litigant. It just doesn't matter. Uh, I mean, mm -hmm. it, you matter if you're the litigant. I promise you, you matter. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, they're telling you 
that they feel validated because others are seeing this now and believing their stories, right. which leads to that weird, ugly dynamic in town that people, quote, know about this. So, right. so they've been verbal about having been abused, they right. say, by this man for a long time. I mean, these victims are in their 50s. Yes, yes. Uh, and that's the strange thing. This is a how small does, town. How, how does this guy continue to, all this time, evolve as such a primary player in community events, all of that? Well, maybe, isn't it also the evolution of how we talk about childhood sexual abuse? I mean, think about it. The, the Globe Spotlight series that came out was about 20 years ago, really broke open the Catholic Church and what they were doing with priests and moving them around. We finally had victims who were talking about that and being validated. The Me Too movement right now, where a lot of women are coming forward. I mean, I've been a journalist for 25 years. I have never seen a moment like I'm seeing now. We started out where victims didn't talk. They didn't identify themselves. Childhood sexual abuse was really not spoken about in the way it is now. People feel safe coming forward. And, I, and I, I'm telling you, that's what at least two of the victims who I spent a lot of time with said to me. It's like, it's different now. You know, maybe people are going to believe me now. Why didn't, uh, why didn't the, uh, the arrest uh, stick? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, and actually, before it was even dismissed, he was elected onto the town Democratic Committee. So it was in the Bristol Phoenix, it was in the Providence Journal that he was charged, or they're calling a morals charge at that time. And yet he was one of many people who was arrested, who was elected to that committee. Uh, he went away, he came back, um, and in 1998 he is on the town council. And I've heard from people who've said they've tried to bring it forward. In fact, I spoke with a, a plumber, local plumber, and he clashed with this guy all the time. Uh, Rick Levy, who sent out 500 postcards in the election of 2006, anonymous at that time, and they, he printed the Bristol Phoenix article of this man's arrest, and he sent them out to what he called the movers and shakers of Bristol, including this, the St. Mary's Church, where this man was uh, administrative assistant. And he was reelected and remained vice chairman. I don't know. What I heard from and she's quoted in the story as Representative uh, Susan Donovan, is we've heard this stuff, but without a real case. I don't know what to believe. You don't know if it's a malicious rumor. And, you know, with three people coming forward, and, you know, the purpose of the story is to put the whole history what together. Is, what is his reputation other than this? Is he gregarious? Powerful. Is he uh, kind of an operator? Is he kind of the guy that everyone loves to have coffee with. I mean, how is he perceived he's other He's everywhere. Than this? That's what I heard from her. He's everywhere. On his LinkedIn page, he's a political consultant. He is involved in everything. But chemistry-wise, personality-wise, how is he viewed? Depends how? on who you ask. There's people who like him and people who don't. Hmm. Well, where does this go from here when we come back? So if you're picking the, the TV show up in the middle, you've got to go to foxprovidence.com and, and, and take the, the conversation from the beginning so you follow this. Um, but uh, Amanda Milkovitz is here, a former pro-Joe writer, now with the Boston Globe Online. This is a, this is a, this is, I don't know, I, 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 I try not to get all crazy with terms like blockbuster and everything else, but this is, mm. a, this is a big one. And I'm sure this has got a lot of chatter going on. Does... Uh, what does Mr. Barbosa do to respond to this? You spoke to him, and he did reporter, twice. and you write that he wanted to go off the record with right. you, and you wouldn't go there. No, there's no point. When somebody goes off the record, you can't use it. So why would I do that? You know, if he wants to respond, I'm happy to take his response. Um, and I made an offer to him, and spelled out. This is what it's really we funny. Know. It's, 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 this is like a journalism seminar in, in, in some sense because the truth is is that uh, I don't need to to ask you if you've ever gone off the record with newsmakers. You do it all the time for perspective on stories. So that depends. You, no, I. I exp mm -hmm. So it depends. I mean, so background you can get perspective. Right. I can use that off the record. 
cameras yeah, 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 and why so, would I do that with yeah. somebody I'm writing about? So make sure no you point. folks understand, uh, on the record is, uh, I'm speaking to you and you're speaking to me, you know I'm yeah. working. Uh, background is you can use the information, but you can't say who, who gave it to you. And off the record is the information and the person are completely off limits. But 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 even 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 deep off the record material gives you gives you a foundation to be able to go find things on the record about a subject matter and mm -hmm. how you use that and how your craft works is 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 part of the art of, of journalism. Uh, but that he wanted to go off the record and you wouldn't go there. No. Uh, in this particular case, this is the kind of story where. Well, what are you going to say off the record, right? I mean, what are you what are you going to tell me? He was cute. Uh, no, no, well, yeah. oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to hear something. You don't want to hear something no. that you either go, oh, my God, and or the facts speak for themselves. Tell me factually what's incorrect about right. this, right? Fausto Anguilla is his lawyer, yep. a well-known political guy, former state representative. Right. Uh, I've always had kind of a, hey, Fausto type of, I don't know him well, but he's always been interactive. Very Has good he areas. spoken to you? Oh, yes. I spoke to him twice. Is he telling you that you're all wet? No. Nope. Oh, I haven't spoken to him since the story's run. No, any, no. Any, but but we talked about any retribution, about, threats of whatever. No. You're right off base. No, no, no. no, no he does nothing not, to suggest that you missed the broadside of the barn on this. He does not discuss pending litigation. Period. That's so. not always the case. In cases like this, lawyers will step up and say, "My client is innocent. This story is bogus. None of that has happened." All right, we only have a, a minute or so here. And the reason why I haven't dug into the play-by-play -play of this story is that it just, it, 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 this, is, this is meant to be read. Read the story. Um, just read the story, and you'll, you'll figure out why we're really kind of talking about the aesthetics of the story. Where does this go from here? I am chasing a lot of tips right now. I mean, since this story hit. Meaning more potential victims? I'm looking into things. That's all I can say. I have You don't been, think this is the end of your work on no, this story? No, it is not. It is not. I don't know where it's going to go. It's too soon. This one took a lot of time because we had to be careful. Where's the right. lawsuit in process? Where, where, at what juncture does it exist? <sighs> I talked to them. It was in Discovery. It hasn't really gone anywhere since, I want to say since March. So that's Your instinct tell there. you this is going to be a court case and or a settlement case? I do not know, and I wouldn't say. I can't. You no know. instinct. Nope. No one I don't suggests know. Whatever hey, happens, this is where happens. It's be. You know, I'm focused on what I'm doing, and this story has gotten more response than any story I've ever written. The town must be rattled. <laughs> the town must be rattled. Yes, they are. But uh, most, actually, all of the response I've received so far has been very positive. It has been, we knew, we heard. I've heard from oh. men about their age who said, my parents warned me to stay away from him. I mean, they're posting this up on social media. Um, we'll stay so tuned. pretty open. Well, thank you for coming. Sure. Appreciate the work. Thank you. Read it. Boston mm -hmm. Globe Online. Be right back. <laughs> Again, uh, equal opportunity here. I don't, I don't know what the next move would be. I hope the town of Bristol is going through some kind of self-examination because if this is a thing where people say, oh, thank goodness, everybody knew, what does that say about the community? I'm not making any judgments, I'm just wondering out loud. All right, we'll follow up with Amanda. I'm sure she'll follow up journalistically. I wish I could say, what a great story, but I will say, have a great weekend. Good night.